Next up in the tank is Daniel Andrian. And Daniel's a, a sophomore at Southern. He's majoring in environmental systems and sustainability uh, and uh, with a concentration in coastal marine systems. Daniel has a unique attachment to the ocean and a blue way to make some green. So turn it over to you, Daniel. Thanks, Richard. Um, so like Larissa said, I was also part of that class with Dr. Heidkamp um, that involved coming up with uh, blue innovations um, to capitalize or make a market of the um, Connecticut kelp industry. Um, so my idea was Deep Blue Chew, which is a vegan kelp chewing gum made from sugar kelp that is farmed off the coast of Connecticut and Long Island Sound. Um, chewing gum is traditionally made from chicle, which it comes from the rubber tree in Central America, or from polyisobutylene, which is the synthetic. Um, those are both not sustainable options, especially um, as their resources coming in from outside the country. Um, so using carrageenan, which is a natural coagulant found in sugar kelp, we can manufacture a chewing gum using only local resources. Um, this would also make it biodegradable since there's no synthetics involved um, or rubber from the rubber tree. That's not always 100% biodegradable. Um, this product would support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals uh, to conduct responsible consumption and production as well as uh, create industry innovation. Um, using local grown sugar kelp will provide uh, market development opportunities for the emerging Connecticut kelp industry. Um, and the target market of this product would be the over 164 million people who chewed gum in the United States alone last year, um, which is a, a pretty big target market. It would also focus on the low has um, market, which is lifestyle of health, fitness, and sustainability. They make up 21% of the adult consumer market in the United States. So that would also be a target market of this product. Um, and consumers uh, are emerging and becoming more interested in sustainable purchase options, such as this kelp uh, gum idea. And I think this would be a huge draw from uh, consumers like that to purchase. So I believe it is a, a huge innovation for the blue economy that is coming out of this Connecticut kelp industry. So again, uh, how do we, how do you sell people on kelp uh, for chewing? Why do they do that instead of uh, uh, the the other kind of chewing gum, Wrigley's. Wrigley's. Why why kelp? Because it's a more sustainable chew or more sustainable option um, that is also biodegradable and vegan. A lot of the the chewing gums that are out there now, not all, but a lot of them, include gelatin, which is actually comes from an animal um, somewhere in the in the animals that required for uh, coagulation. Um, I believe that yeah, getting it's pig fat. what's that? It's pig fat. Pig fat. Okay. Um, removing that from the equation opens up a, a lot bigger market to those who want to chew gum. I essentially would like to start it in, you know, local health food stores um, where it's kind of like the hipster vibe because it, it is an odd product and something that um, you don't normally hear of, but it's something that, is more earth friendly and focused on the environment that um, people who look for products such as that will focus on and want to purchase. That seems like a more viable market to me, you know, uh, start with that. If it, if it turns out that it actually tastes good and has other benefits, yeah. but start with people who care about that. You know, um, our friend uh, Bob Dorf, who's, talk to us a lot about this stuff, says, you want to find 20 people who are dying for your product. You can do that. You'll, you'll find the rest of the market, right? So find the 20 people who are so vegan that, you know, they, they, they're just, they won't even chew uh, uh, chewing gum. 
as it is now, that, that's your market. Start with that and find out what it is that they that makes them care about it so much and cater to that. Yeah, I I didn't intend to start as a competition in like grocery stores or anything like that. <laughs> um, just start by getting awareness out, you know, cool fancy packaging obviously yeah. helps, but getting it in those stores that already have other ideas that are kind of out there or different and that just builds awareness and I think that's the best way to start making it a, a name for the for what I want to make. I'm not sure I would even start in a store. I might start in farmers markets, for example. Yeah, that that's a great idea. Also, I was thinking like you know Guilford Health Foods. It's it's there's only like two stores, you know, yep. small things like that. Nothing like Whole Foods or big chain Squirrely. markets. Just yeah. small small health food stores. Maybe like um, farmers markets, like you suggested, like you know yeah. at the Durham Fair, things like that. Um, what are the big E? I yeah, don't know. Big e. <laughs> yeah. You know, here, here's a model for you. Uh, have you heard of Burt's Bees? Have you heard of yes. uh, Times, Times of Maine? Yep. Have you heard of this and that and all these PCB, you know, infused uh, products? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can look at them as a model because they all started at farm stands. Yep. Okay. And, and another thing here, if you were coming to me asking me for money, I'd want to I want to know from you. I'd say gum. Oh, okay. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, but I, I want to know the five. You tell me of the, tell me the five main reasons people chew gum. Why do people chew gum? Okay. Now, if that solves a, that would that would that if they chew gum, it must solve some sort of problem for them. Yeah. Okay. And maybe it's uh, you know halitosis. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. I don't know. But. You gotta, you, you're gonna have to explain why people chew gum so that when you show up with this product, you can say to this retailer, do you realize how many of your customers chew gum? No, no, I don't. Well, can you tell me, do you, do you know why they're chewing gum? Well, you, 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 and that's how you launch this discussion because then it becomes interesting. All right, you know, tell me more. But you're gonna have to do, this is Bob Dorf again. You're gonna have to do your research. You're gonna have to come up with a, top five reasons or the top five problems that your gum's going to solve. And it could be taste. I don't know. I don't know what, but you're going to have to do it more better. All right. Because, you know, sustainability, that's nice. But uh, look at the, if, if that doesn't solve the problem or the reason or address the reason why people chew gum, they're not going to buy your stuff. Yeah. No, I, I totally understand that. There are other things that it does that I did not mention, um, but I see what you're saying. Like, figure out the reasons why, why it's a, a target market or why. Yeah, I mean, do I have a, a latent want to chew gum? I don't know. But if you could find that and market it, I could become a gum chewer. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, make it all natural. Grind up coca leaves and cannabis while you're at it. Add it to the kelp. Exactly. Yeah. All natural. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I think, it's, I think it's a great idea. For me, the most important thing is it's got to taste good. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know? I think that's one of the reasons people chew gum is to have something to do and to have something that tastes good. But yeah. what the hell do I know? Yeah. But I think, I think at its core, your, your motivation of displacing useless and maybe even dangerous chemicals with naturally derived, derived stuff is a very good idea. And I, you know. Yeah, have, have you got a pack of Wrigley's there, Daniel? Uh, not with me. Have you, have you looked at a pack of gum to see what the ingredients are? Yeah, they're not, not very good. Yeah, polyvinyl fornicate. Uh, yeah, find something that's toxic. Yeah. Here, here you go. And then you can you say sell it to movie movie theaters as non-stick gum. It'll fall off the seat when people stick it underneath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or only from the finest pigs. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But that's what it is. The animal fat is mostly pig fat. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Great, great job, Daniel. And uh, panelists, thank you so much. One more quick thing. We actually have some experts in food. So if you go a little bit further along like this and you want to loop back, you're welcome to do that. I can 
Okay. Thank you. I appreciate more developed. You need a food expert. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit our website at www.futurefrogman.org.